The oldest Hindu evidence concerning the elephant in Sumatra is a forearm image of the elephant headed god Ganesha, 56 cm high, which I excavated at Simangambat, South Tapanuli. One of the hands is broken off, but in the other three, he holds a hatchet, a tux, and a skull. In the head dress are the new moon and the dead's head, symbols of life and death. This discovery proves this this discovery proves that the temple of Simangambat was sacred to the Shiva feet, thus comprising the oldest Shiva document in Sumatra, eighth of sixth century. Ganesha is the son of Shiva, leader of the heavenly Mahas. He is usually fed believed. He is usually fed believed and well disposed toward mankind. He removes obstacles and in this capacity is the god of thieves. He also affects illness and is the patron saint of doctors. It is it is said that at his birth his father is a fury in a fury struck of in a fury struck of his head by repenting later, swore to give him the head of the first of the first being he changed to encounter that morning. This happened to be an elephant, and so Ganesha was endowed with his present mishap and form. However, this did not prevent him from becoming one of the most popular gods on the, of the Hindu faith. Women especially honored him, and numerous images of him are therefore found in Java. In Sumatra, on the contrary, he is found only four times in stone and once in bronze. This will be to be explained by the superposition of the Buddhism which tolerated no gods of the Shiva Ved. Yet the Buddhists too included the elephant among their deities, as is proved by the magnificent relief of a dancing pachyderm which was excavated at Pulo in central Tapanuli. It reminds one of the prelude of the one of the prelude to the ocean of stories, the famous old Indian book of tales in which is told how Ganesha created the world dancing in the twilight, while with his trunk he scattered star golden golden stars over the firmament. Strangely strangely strange enough this dancing of the elephants has lingered in the popular fancy and has served to inspire many beautiful and touching legends such as that which is told in Jambi in the full of the moon they congregate in an open space in the world and the wood arrange themselves in the cycle stand on their hind legs and greet the moon with their tongues involuntarily one of involuntary one is reminded of the story of in clippings in kipling's jungle books in which is told how to st how the step boy to me is carried deep into the forest on the back of an elephant to attend the gathering of the herd. He hears the of the grazing of the great tusks, the sinister scrubbing of enormous flanks and shoulders, the restless swishing of their tails. Then an elephant trumpeted and for ten terrible seconds all repeated the call, the dew from the trees pattered down like rain on the unseen backs and dull roaring sound began. Not very loud at first and little to me, could not tell what is what, what it's what, what it was, and it swelled and swelled and color not lifted one four foot, then the other set them down on the ground, one two, one two, like sledge hammers, as we like sledge hammers, as we see the resemblance to the Sumatran legend is not complete, but anyone who has encountered elephants. In the jungle fields, the jungle fields that the description is true to life. Another common belief is that the elephant causes the lightning in various parts of Sumatra. There are conflicting opinions as to how it is done in the Batak lands. It is declared that he simply hugs or the he simply hugs the lightning from his trunk. In Palembang, on the contrary, it is supposed to be caused the serp serpenting of his teeth. In, in the camper, another in the camper, another story is told. As soon as storm approaches, the elephants begin to tremble in every limb. The hair stands on the end. The lightning flashes. The, then proceed from this hair. Still more remarkable are the stories of their dead. 
as soon as they feel the end approaching, they go to a lonely mountain. On it stands a tall tree, the dead tree. Under this, they lie down to break their last breath. This mountain must be a terrible sight. Here lie bleached skulls with hollow eye sockets and gaping jaws, enormous bones and long tusks. Yes, if anyone could collect these tusks, his, he would be rich. But the road to the Eleventh Mountain is unknown. One day, a man walked through a great forest. Suddenly, he stumbled over a great task. He pulled aside the underbrush. He saw, st he saw still more tasks, and at once it dawned upon him that he had happened to find the Eleventh Cemetery. Joyfully, he lifted the task over his shoulder and figured out how much money they would bring him. It was strange, however, that he could not find his way back and continued to return again and again to the place from which he had started. Evening fell, and he began to very much frightened. At length, he understood that he must lay down the task. He, not, he did so, and soon after found his way back home. Of equal interest is the discovery of a small bronze elephant in the south of Tapanuri. He is strong. He holds a lotus bud on his back seat to moments. Apparently, the latter are the latter are portraits of the dead, according to superstition. After the soul leaves the body, it descends to the underworld on the back of an elephant. The oldest and most beautiful evidence of this is the wonderfully modeled stone elephant at Pagaralam in South Sumatra on opposite sides of the animal near to two men. It with each with a great pointed helmet on his head, a sword at his side, and a drum on his back. This portrayal of two warriors of their way to the kingdom of death is one of the most beautiful and original of all sculptures in Sumatra. Beginning with 9th century, all accounts of travel means beginning with the 9th century, all accounts of travel mention that the elephant was used in battle especially the kings of Palembang and later those of Achin had a formidable corpse of, of writing elephants. We do not know whether the animal is indigenous to Borneo, nor do we know whether it came originally from Sumatra in the Padang Highlands. There is a legend that the elephants came originally from Malacca and that at one time there was a bridge between Malacca and Sumatra. Many more stories might be told about elephants, but the usual hunting yarns may be omitted. Any man who have lived in the East India Indies have, has a stock of them. Very few, however, have been able to observe this interesting animal in its own surroundings. The other has only once seen an elephant which had been shot. It was in central Jambi, downstream from Muaratebo. It had been sought for this previously, and even from a great distance, one caught the putrid smell of the cadaver. It lay in a forest clearing in the animal's horrible death, struggled everything within a, a distance of six feet had been destroyed. Now it lay on the right side, one for foot, one for foot, drowned up, the belly yellowish white, the head black but cut with clotted blood, the setting sun, the setting sun cast a weed light on the on the lifeless body, not as on disturb the jungle's silence over the fallen giant reigns the majesty of death. A herd of a herd of elephants covers an extensive field in which they continually wander about. The pasture of each herd consists of low mesas and high and high mountain regions. As soon as heavy showers cause the river banks to, to, flow, to overflow, the lowlands are flooded and the herd slowly retreats to the hill district. The size of herd depends on the extent of its habitat, so that the larger herds remain in the delta of great rivers. 
where the smaller ones live in the districts irrigated by small rivers such as Benkulen, ben Benkulen and Northern Sumatra. The number of animals is in a herd varies from 15 to 100. The extent of the region occupied is at least 200 km and at the most from 1000 to 1200 km where the boundaries are clearly divided. If the rainy season, if the rainy season is long, the animal remains longer in the hill district. As a result, no one than elephants are observed where, where they appear only once in four or seven years. The number of elephants in Sumatra is of course difficult to estimate. In the short alone, Lampongs and short half of Benkulen, there are at least 2,000 two km, 2,000 formerly. The natives had many firearms, but not at the present time. For this reason, elephants are now in less danger of being exterminated, and in the rainy season, they regularly visit the rice fields and pepper gardens where they feed to their heart's content. In the wood, in the woods, they graze only on the on young twigs and leaves of various trees, especially those with survivor such as waru, dadap, etc., the bark of which is torn off in strips. Even branches with the thickness of an arm are gnawed, after which they are usually thrown away. The tops of various young palms, such as Nibung, Serdang, and Pandan, are also regarded as a delicacy. In addition, the eight young rotten creepers of all kinds, from very thin young from very thin ones to those having the thickness of a cable, the crown of which is attached to their trees and dragged down by their trunks. In this way, heavy branches are sometimes torn off, falling to the ground with a, he with a heavy thud. Now and then, a dead tree, a dead tree trunk crashes to the ground. In the ex in extensive marshes, the eleven degrees for days at a time on young red swords and grasses. In the hill, in the hill country, slender bamboos growing the banks of small rivers are dragged to the ground and strip of the top of the top and side branches. The wets of chilled fiber are discarded. The herd remains all day in the same place, looking for food and moving only about three kilometers at the most. This the trail is a network of tracks crossing and recrossing continually and covering a breadth of one or two kilometers. As the fun got with the female reader always consists of females with the young only a short distance is covered. The other elephants roam about in groups of three or four. In following on all trails, it is always important to follow the trail of the young, as otherwise the chance of catching up with the herd is extremely small. Moreover, the fawn god, which includes the young, always follows the easy track. In the streaks, far from the inhabited world, parts of the herd keep in touch with easy with each other by means of signals, short trumpetings, usually they collect directly after nightfall at over a four kilometers wide signals are heard which kiss after the animals have constructed at the one at one point here they rest for several hours to what might to what might a few trumpet sequels squills are yet are uttered and the head again sets into motion. During the night, they remain close together. The track is only a few meters wide and rushed without interrupter, interruption over hills, rivers, and marshes. The distance all covered during the night depends on the character of the ground and the number of young animals. A herd with many young calves only 5 to 10, to 10 kilometers. For the big until nine or ten o'clock, the herds take a race. They spread out and continue their march. When they have been for a long time in a limited field, they begin to make a great deal of noise at night and continually they have they are heard romping and playing, snorting and squealing. One asks, 
how it is possible for them to notice in time the steep edges of ravines and other obstacles in the dark woods. For instance, if there has been a landslide, uh, a landslide, the trail of the hut makes a detour at a distance of 10 meters from the point of danger. In another place, the trail is one meter away from the edge of a deep ravine. During a night march, when they come to a deep river which they cannot cross, they can they, they change their direction, follow the edge of the forest for one kilometer or more, and then descend at exactly the more favorable point. The strange thing in this procedure is that they do not even approach the edge of the bank of or slope, but turn a set at a distance of 15 meters, follow the edge of the embankment at the same distance, and then, with a sharp curve, come out uh, precisely the right place in their most dangerous tracks along steep banks and first ravines they leave a narrow trail working apparently in single file the soldier who has only himself to look after seems to take fewer precautions climbing and descending much deeper slopes than the rest of the herd which moves in company evidently the leader takes the less experienced animals into consideration. When elephants are grazing in the daytime, one sees continually wild pigs and deer behind the hut, <coughs> and even in the midst, sometimes there are several species, such as the Bankiva, the Argus present or Kuau, Argus Janus, Argus L. In Cal, in in cal in calcumless and often in dense woods on the and on the on and on hillsides the Agus person or Kuau Agus Janus Agus L in the marshes the company consists mainly of Bangos, Maraboots, occasionally herons and more to the edge of the swamps, wild pigs and deer. The last two are observed only in the morning and afternoon. All these animals graze on the rotten foot, torn down by the elephants, while the wild chickens stretch, scratch at the hips of, of manor. In the first red marshes, which are entirely submerged during the rainy season, there are quantities of fish here, and they are protected from the herons by, the, by high reeds. During the grazing of the elephants, the way is clear for these birds, and they find a mass of temple fish. In the hill country, but never in marshes, one of them sees tigers, tiger tracks behind the trail of the herd. Apparently, the tigers follow this trail at night, hunting for deer or wild birds. Creeping up on the herd is very difficult for human beings, because serpent Serpent deer and especially birds and monkeys at one not at once notice the report. When a cry of mourning is heard in the dense jungle, the nearest elephants stop grazing at once, standing dead, standing dead still for several minutes with their ears outspread. If the cries are repeated, the elephants quickly disperse and join another section of the herd farther on. When a part of the herd sense danger, they always give a short, shrill trumpet call, then join the out at fast cut, all the animals assembling directly and remaining remarkably still. The behavior of various herds after scenting that danger varies greatly, depending on the leader's courage and strength and strategy and the size of the young. A herd with very small calves will retreat slowly and if the enemy continues to pursue they will take a defensive stand after a long time if the leader notices nothing unusual she will turn back on the trail in order to investigate she avoids making any noise and after every 10 or 20 steps she stands perfectly still perfectly still for several seconds continually sniffing the air Sometimes she reconnoitres 
along several of the trails followed by the hut. If she, if she finds nothing, she turns back and soon they continue to gush and to play as before but more quietly and with greater caution. Again and again, the trunks are raised and, un and all unnecessary noise is avoided. When the leader detects danger, however, she announces her displeasure by rolling and pouring the ground continually with one of the four feet. Slowly, she returns to the hut, rolling all the while. As soon as she has passed all the animals, she gives a short trumpet call, whereupon the whole hut gallops away with a crash of a, with a crash as of thunder. This headlong flight continues only for a few hundred meters, dominating always in dense cover, rich rotten, dense jungle of bamboo duri, where they remain very quietly until nightfall, after which they increase their distance between themselves and the pursuers by a false march. Further pursuit is most dangerous for the hunter. The leader is then in the rear, in the rear guard, facing the enemy, and at least 50 meters away from the others. She makes almost no noise and stands, and stands listening, eating slowly, watching, dead still for minutes at a time.